Okay, so to kind of connect what we just did in the last video with kind of where we're headed, being able to draw resonance based on the electron donating groups you have and the electron withdrawing groups you have is going to be imperative to how to predict the product and deals auto reactions. Just trust me. Okay, so remember how to identify an electron donating group. It makes them more reactive because remember, we saw if we swung electrons down here, we could swing these electrons over here and we could kick these electrons up as a lone pair, putting a negative charge, whoops, putting a negative charge on the carbon that ends up with it, right? So let me just erase that real quick. And same deal with the dienophile, right? On the dienophile, oh, and remember, on electron, do electron donating groups, you have to look at the atom directly attached from the system, and if they have electrons and they're electronegative, that's an electron donating group. On the other hand, if you look at a dienophile, where we put electron withdrawing groups to activate them and make them more reactive, the carbon directly off of the system is going to have a partial positive charge. So he needs to be attached to some electronegative atom, right? He's going to try and suck electron density out of the system. The system here being our dienophile. Okay, remember, we would take these electrons and swing them up here and kick these electrons up here, putting a positive charge down there. So you saw there was a negative charge here. These guys would match up in the formation of, of, of a, our ring, our cycloproduct. So let me erase these. Okay, so let's get towards predicting the product. As you've seen just now, our diene and dienophile are matched up, right? And that's a good thing. That means we're ready to go and ready to predict our product. So let's go ahead and do it. Always, always, oh, let me erase that arrow. The first thing you can always do, no matter what kind of diene or dienophile you have, once you've, once you've made sure that the respective charges that these groups induce are matched up, is you can always draw a six-membered ring. Six-membered ring is always made from the diels auto reaction. And put a double bond right here. And I'm going to go ahead and number this carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and six. You'll see why in a second. I'm going to go ahead and number these carbons, number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So remember, we said we're going to have this type of ring formation. So on position number one, we're going to have this OCH3. I'm just going to float him up over here. You'll see why in a second. Nothing on position two, nothing on position three, nothing on position four, nothing on position five, and on six we have this aldehyde, right? So I'm going to move six over here, and I'm going to kind of just, whoops, float him out there. Here's the reason why. In deals alder reactions, stereochemistry is a factor, right? We need to have our groups either have wedges or dashes. And there's two types of groups in deals alder reactions. They are what are called out groups, and then there are what are called in groups. And I'll give you an example of both. So this little kind of ring forming pocket I just drew, if you are in the ring forming pocket, you are considered an in group. So I know there's no group at this carbon right here, but do you see if I drew a hydrogen right here and I kind of asterisked him? He would be an in group. This methoxy group on the other hand, he's an out group because he's not in this little pocket. So you can see there's the same type of thing going on at position number six. This aldehyde, not in the like ring forming pocket, so he's an out group. However, if I drew his H, I know he's not directly in the pocket, but he's going towards it. So if you're in the pocket or going towards the pocket, you're an in group. Here's the convention. Out groups get the same stereochemistry as out groups, or the same type of either wedge or dash. In groups get the same as other in groups. And it's arbitrary. So let's just say I wanted to make my out groups wedges for whatever reason. I would wedge this methoxy group because he's an out group. And then I see, oh, the aldehyde is also an out group. So I'm going to give him a wedge as well. On the other hand, since I've then decided that my out groups are wedges, that means my in groups are dashes. So if I'm going to draw this asterisk, oh, I'll actually asterisk them both. If, I'll asterisk, if I draw these asterisk hydrogens at position number one, right? That's where he goes. He's a, he's a dash because he's an in group. 
Same with this, asterisk hydrogen. He's an in-group, and I decided that my in-groups are dashes, so that's how I go about that. Okay, so let me just do another quick example, and then I'll show you why we were drawing residents in the first place. Okie dokie. So let's try this. Let me just see if I give you this diene with an ethoxy group on it. Remember, still an electron donating group. Just promise me that the negative charge will end up down here. And again, I'll just use the same dienophile with an aldehyde. Okay, so let's number our carbons. One, two, three, four, and then five, and then six. I'll draw my generic ring. And then I'll number, well, one, two, three. Double bond goes in between two and three. Four, five, and six. And actually, just for fun, I'm going to put a methyl group over here. Okay, I'm going to form my little ring forming pocket. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that we have an out group with this OET, with this ethoxy group. The aldehyde is also an out group. But you can see that this methyl group at position five. He's an in-group. So this time I'm going to arbitrarily pick that this ethoxy group is going to be a dash. And that means all my outgroups are going to be dashes, right? So at position one, I'll dash my OET. At position six, I'll dash my aldehyde. Move the six over here. And then that means at position five, this methyl group, which is an in-group, he'll be a wedge. And the reason, guys, that you can just kind of pick and choose is that if I just pick my outgroups to be wedges and my ingroups to be dashes, that's just the enantiomer of the diels alder reaction. And this reaction produces a 50-50% enantiomer mixture, a.k.a. a racemic mixture. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video, and then we're going to do one more reaction, and you'll see why we were drawing that resonance. Okay, so I've kicked it up a little bit of a notch but nothing you guys can't handle. All right, so let's just say I've given you guys this Diels alder reaction. So I'm going to number my groups, number one. Actually, we're gonna hold off on that, you'll see why. Let me draw my resonance because I've been giving you the diene and the dienophile matched up based on how the charges would have been propagated with the electron donating and electron withdrawing groups, but sometimes people are sneaky and they don't always are nice and give you them that way. So let's draw some resonance. So you can see that right down here on the diene, a directly attached is a nitrogen with electrons. So he's an electron donating group, right? We have an EDG. So if I drew the resonance where this electron pair came down, this bond swung over here, and this electron pair swung up, you can see that I'm having my negative charge up top, right? However, if I'm looking at this dienophile over here, you can see directly attached to the system, right, my two carbon uh, dienophile system, I have this carbon right here and he is partially positive, right? Because he's attached to this carbonyl oxygen and the oxygen in this ether over, or this ester, right, he's, that's OCH3, electron density is leaving the dienophile. So if I drew the resonance like this, that would leave a positive charge at that carbon below. And you can see if I were to draw my little pocket, ring forming pocket, my negative charge is up here and my positive charge is down there. And that is bad. That means if someone were to do this to you and you completed the reaction, it would be wrong because you made the wrong atom to atom connections. So that's why you have to draw the resonance. That's why it's important to be able to identify electron donating and electron withdrawing groups and to be able to be uh, able to actually draw that resonance because you need to check if the charges are lined up. So if this was ever the case where you found that someone was trying to be a little malicious, trying to be a hater and kind of try and trip you up, here's what you have to do. You have to pick one piece, the diene or the dienophile, and then you have to flip it, right? Because that way, if I put the negative charge down here, we would be all good to go and matched up. So let me flip this piece for you. So it would look a little like this. We had the NH2 up here, and I had an isopropyl group three positions away. 
One, two, three. Excellent. Now we're matched up. Now we've drawn the resonance, we're matched up, and we can apply the in-out rule to predict our stereochemistry and actually predict the product. So remember, we always make our six-membered ring with a double bond between positions two and three. One, two, three, double bond, four, five, and six. Okay, so let's make our little pocket. All right, so it's safe to say that the NH2 and the ester over here, those are out groups. On the other hand, it looks like this ethyl group right here is an in group. So that's good. You understand why I'm ignoring the isopropyl group in just a second. Okay, so let's just for fun pick the NH2 and the, let's pick our out groups to be wedges. I'll wedge my NH2 group at position number one. I'll wedge my NH or I'll wedge my ester at position six. Move the six a little bit. At position five, this ethyl group, he's in, right? Because he's going towards the pocket. So he's a dash. And right here at one, two, three, sorry, I forgot to number this. Five and six. At position three, right, we have this isopropyl group. So what's his stereochemistry? And hopefully you guys are smirking behind, you know, at your computers thinking there is no stereochemistry, right? Because at position three, he's sp2 hybridized. This carbon right here is planar. There is no stereochemistry. So if you ever get, you know, something at position two or position three like this, that's because there is no stereochemistry. Okay, so I hope you've learned that the process for predicting diels alder reactions is not that bad. You basically need to figure out, you need to do a few things. You need to draw the resonance for the diene and the dienophile to make sure your charges match up. Once they match up, draw your little pocket, the ring forming pocket, number your carbons, number the carbons on your ring, make sure you have the double bond between two and three, then pick a convention. Make your out groups a wedge. That makes your in groups a dash or the other way around. If you follow this process, you can predict any product. So I just want to talk about one thing really quick, but let me erase this. It'll take no more than a minute. All right, before we wrap up this video, just one quick concept. So you guys have been seeing that I've been drawing our dienes like this, right? It almost kind of looks like a C. In actuality, this is very important because what if I would have drawn our diene like this? These guys actually have names. This is the S cis diene conformation, and this structure over here is the S trans diene conformation. Remember back to where we discussed that pi bonds in double bonds have parallel sets of p orbitals, and because they have to remain parallel, there's no free rotation, right? Otherwise, we'd break the pi bond. So you can see, right, that this guy has to be in this conformation to make a diels auto reaction work. There's no rotation, so this guy can't adopt this necessary conformation to make a ring with, say, a dienophile. You need the S cis. So you cannot, cannot, cannot make a diels auto reaction work if you're in the S trans conformation. You need the S cis. And it's really hard to kind of make him adopt this conformation. So really quickly, I just want to have some a question for food for thought. It's, it's on the worksheet, but I'm going to kind of give you a little teaser hint, a little help. Okay, so what happens if I drew these two dienes for you guys? Actually, wrong one. This structure and this structure. So carefully look at where the double bonds are. Think about who's S cis and who's S trans. Now, now that you've thought about it, hopefully this makes sense. This structure always does a diels alder reaction. This structure never does a diels alder reaction. All right, this wraps up, well actually, lies. We have one more topic to talk about. We need to draw the transition states of diels alder reactions then we're done and on to benzene 
and a big scary phrase, which isn't scary, called electrophilic aromatic substitutions. But I know you guys will end up being bosses at it. See you in the next video.